Uh, today, uh, I want to talk about uh, GitHub Actions and also Azure DevOps. Uh, but before uh, we start the presentation, uh, I'll just say a few words about myself. So uh, my name is Patrick. I am a lead DevOps engineer in SoftServe. Uh, my background is uh, as a .NET developer. I've been working for a few years. Uh, I've got eight, uh, actually, currently it will be more than nine uh, years of experience in IT. Uh, I'm also Microsoft certified professional in areas of DevOps of Azure architecture and of security. And about my private life, uh, so I think we have mostly engineers here. So the best would be to describe me using some data. So um, I play video games, console, mostly PlayStation. Um, I also listen to uh, uh, mostly rock and metal music. Um, I attend a lot of concerts during the year. Uh, so I, I think the data can can show uh, a little more uh, than I can say. Uh, yeah, and uh, besides that, uh, also one of my biggest hobby currently is smart home. Uh, so uh, I like to uh, do some crazy stuff uh, in in the regarding to the apartment. Yeah. Okay, but that's uh, enough about me. So uh, the agenda for today. Uh, so first. Uh, I want to just jump uh, a little through the history, I would say, uh, to see uh, what what we had before, what we have now, uh, to uh, see what's GitHub Actions, uh, how it looks currently. Uh, then I want to compare the features between Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions, see what's available, what's missing, what's different, what's the same. Um, and uh, the next... Uh, mm, Next uh, point will be like to, make, to present the migration options. So uh, how can we switch from one to another? And then I will uh, present a quick, uh, a short demo uh, regarding mostly the, the migration part, because I think it's most uh, interesting here. Uh, okay, so let's see uh, GitHub Actions overview. So uh, uh, I, I want to start with uh, TFS because uh, in uh, 2000, uh, 2012, uh, Microsoft uh, presented the first uh, iteration of Team Foundation Service, which was actually the cloud version of Team Foundation Server. Uh, yeah, and it was like the start of uh, the platform which became uh, Azure DevOps uh, in the future. Uh, so, and one, one year later, they changed the name because TFS, in most uh, cases, it uh, uh, it was referring the their old, uh, uh, it's probably still existing, uh, uh, Git uh, uh, control version platform, which was like of uh, compet competent competent to Git. Uh, yeah, so they renamed the platform, but. The features remain mostly the same. Then in uh, uh, 2015, uh, they uh, rename it one more time, but they also refreshed the UI. They added some uh, more feature. The platform is starting to look uh, like uh, what we can see today as Azure DevOps. Yeah, and uh, three days later, uh, they um, Rename it one more time, and uh, it's become uh, Azure DevOps in the form which we know it today. And since that time, uh, there were also added uh, a new, uh, some of the new features. Uh, but what's interesting in the same year, uh, GitHub Actions uh, have been uh, presented, and from from that time, we have like two different platforms. Uh, which uh, both are uh, driven by Microsoft. Uh, why? Because, uh, yeah, in uh, 218, uh, Microsoft uh, acquired GitHub. Uh, so uh, that was uh, like a very, very important uh, action from this side. Uh, so, um, yeah, and uh, Last time I have I was presenting this uh, this presentation uh, during the questions 
Uh, I've got uh, one question which uh, I think I, I should explain at the beginning, so I'm doing it right now. Uh, I, I don't want you uh, to uh, have, uh, let's say, kind of bias for Azure DevOps after this presentation. What I mean is, uh, I want you to show that you have uh, like two options, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, Azure DevOps will be like deprecated or something like that. Uh, at least not not for now. Uh, from the facts which we know, uh, which were confirmed by Microsoft, uh, Azure DevOps uh, server, which is like the uh, on-prem version of Azure DevOps, you can say, uh, currently the version uh, 2022 is the last one, uh, and they they want to create uh, uh, the newer version. Uh, it will uh, it will have support up to at uh, 2028, uh, but still, that doesn't mean that they're deprecating Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps is currently a uh, fully, I would say, major platform, uh, which uh, we still uh, sh can and we should be using. Uh, but of course, there is GitHub Actions, which is like uh, being more and more popular. Uh, when you, for example, go into MSDN and when you're looking for some examples, uh, some documentation uh, of Azure pipelines, you probably notice that you have now like two tabs and you can select. Uh, for example, you have some sample pipeline, you have see the option for Azure DevOps, but on the other hand, you can also see the option for GitHub Actions. So currently they are supporting both platforms, um, but probably the focus uh, is being on GitHub Actions. Why? Uh, Last year, uh, I have been in London on uh, DevOpsCon. Uh, I was talking with uh, a guy who was working uh, in uh, GitHub, and he said that uh, Microsoft uh, currently uh, probably won't implement new features for Azure DevOps. However, I still think this is, as I said, fully mature platform, uh, but their focus now is to extend GitHub Actions. So uh, it just might be the way uh, we will be doing pipelines in the future. But yeah, but for now, still both options are valid. Okay, uh, so about the features, let's see what we have here. Uh, for Azure pipelines, uh, yeah, the basic features, uh, triggers, because we need to run our uh, pipelines somehow. We have hosted and self-hosted agents, so we can use Microsoft agents, but we can also uh, create our own agent pools. Uh, there is one feature which I like very much, uh, which is container jobs, uh, because for example, you, you have some uh, agent pool and uh, you there might be a situation that you can't like uh, install some tool which you need to run your pipeline, but thanks to container jobs, you can just create Docker image with all the required tools and you, uh, you can just uh, run the whole pipeline in the context of that uh, the Docker, uh, Docker container. So it helps a lot in, in some situations. Uh, we have strategies. Uh, they are different for jobs and for deployment jobs. So we can set how do we want to run uh, our flow. Uh, we have the, yeah, we have deployment jobs and environments. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, we can like um, specify some additional features uh, some approvals, some logs, for example, for different uh, physical environments. Uh, we have expressions, which allows us to create uh, dynamic pipelines. Uh, yeah, of course, we can always use uh, the condition uh, to run or not to run uh, some task, some job, uh, but expressions are even more powerful because we can actually dynamically create uh, uh, a part of a pipeline during the run. So. Uh, yeah, also variable groups, which you probably uh, use a lot, uh, which allows us to specify variables per, for example, per, per environment. We have templates, uh, which on the other hand, uh, allows us to not to uh, create same stuff multiple times. We can reuse some of the parts of our pipelines. Uh, we have also cache, uh, which is useful when, for example, you have some Notes and PM packages or any other Java.NET uh, 
packages to restore uh, tasks or actually the possibilities are here are uh, like whatever you need okay and those are i would say like the most uh, maybe not the most basic but the features which i have been using a lot uh, while working with azure pipelines and how does it look in github actions okay so uh, we don't have triggers we have events uh, yeah actually they work similar like triggers because they're being used for triggering the workflow uh, but uh, they have uh, a lot i would say there is kind of more uh, opportunities or more uh, available, uh, available options for trigger and github action pipeline than in azure pip pipelines but i will we'll go into that in a moment uh, when it comes to the agents yeah we also have uh, hosted and self-hosted runners uh, actually the interesting part here is when you for example want to create your own uh, self-hosted agent uh, of course you need the agent uh, the, the agent runner uh, the, the executable and when you go into github and when you find the microsoft uh, official repo you can see that the repo actually is common for Azure pipelines and for GitHub Actions agents. So uh, actually the runners under the hood, they're using the same, the same code. Uh, yeah. Um, about container jobs, yes, we also have this feature, which has been called containerized services, but it works uh, very similar. Uh, we can run the whole pipeline in the context of a container, or we can also use something which yeah i didn't mention uh, that before but we also had service containers which uh, for example uh, we need to mock some database during the test and uh, we can just uh, do it very fast uh, in service container which will start uh, at the same time when our pipeline starts uh, strategies yeah so in github actions we have uh, just for now we have the matrix strategy uh but uh may maybe that's because uh there isn't like um the, in azure pipelines we had deployment jobs and regular jobs in github actions we don't have that uh so uh it just like um, i would say it's kind of different mindset here uh, we, we could use matrix jobs in uh our deployments which we couldn't done in azure devops because matrix a strategy has been only for uh, regular jobs. Uh, yeah, and uh, about environments, yeah, we also had this feature in GitHub Actions. Uh, expressions, they're also there, so we also can uh, dynamic, dynamically modify uh, the pipeline or actually dynamically create it uh, during the runtime. Uh, there, there aren't variable groups, there are, but there are environment secrets. So you can specify the secrets for the whole workflow or for the specific environment. Uh, yeah, templates, uh, we have on GitHub, on GitHub Actions reusable workflows, which uh, works uh, pretty similar. That's just a, a kind of a YAML file which you can reuse in another workflow. And also we have this cache task. Um, so as you can see, uh, when we're doing some like high level uh, overview, uh, they're pretty same, but there are some differences. And now uh, we will deep dive into each of those uh, categories of features and we see how it looks under the hood. Okay. so. Let's start the feature com uh, comparison. Pipeline and workflow. Uh, so how does the pipeline look in Azure DevOps? So yeah, we have like three levels. Uh, the first, level, actually four, because pipeline itself is also, I would say, kind of a level. But inside the pipeline, you have like three levels. So we have stages, we have jobs, we have steps. And uh, how does it look in? Uh, work, GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions, and so first of all, we were talking about the workflow, not a pipeline, and that just uh, 
uh, nomenclature. So, uh, yeah, and we have um, we have jobs, we have steps. We don't have the uh, stages. Uh, so you might ask the question: uh, if you have a pipeline which contains, uh, which is multi-stage, contains little stages, how should I move it into GitHub Actions? So I would say you have two options. You can either uh, convert these stages into uh, jobs, or you can either create uh, uh, separate workflows uh, per each stage. But of course, that depends uh, on your pipeline, on the complexity, uh, which option will be more uh, uh, comfortable for you to use. Okay, now triggers and events. So uh, the type of triggers we have in Azure pipelines, uh, CI triggers, which is some pull request or simple git, uh, git commit uh, action, which can trigger our pipeline. Uh, schedule triggers, we can schedule our pipelines to run uh, using the uh, cron, uh, cron schedule. We have pipeline triggers, so we can uh, make a flow that when so one of our pipelines finishes or fails, they can trigger another pipeline. Uh, there is also there are also those two options, which honestly I haven't been using, but I just discovered it uh, when I was researching this uh, this this uh, topic. There are common triggers, but it only works when you have your repo on GitHub, not on uh, Azure repos. And there are also gated check-in uh, triggers, but those are rated. Uh, to uh, TFS, uh, so when you use TFS uh, source control, not Git. And uh, for that, if I remember correctly, you will need to use the classic uh, pipelines, uh, the, uh, the classic uh, non-YAML uh, pipelines, because uh, you can't uh, create YAML partner on TFS. So you probably won't be using that. Yeah, anyway, uh, how does it look in GitHub Actions? Uh, we have, as I said, events. Uh, there are like two uh, categories of events. There are events that occur uh, in your workflow, in your repository. So this is this can be basically all this stuff which is on the left side, like uh, CI, PR, and many other things. There are also uh, events that occur outside of your GitHub uh, project. Uh, so there is this repository dispatch event. And you can use it like a webhook, for example, and uh, also use it to trigger the pipelines. And of course, there are scheduled times, which is also uh, some kind of cron job trigger. But what's interesting here, uh, let's see, uh, the, those are some of the uh, events we can use. Uh, for the time I was creating the presentation, uh, it was like uh, three months ago, Possibly now we have even more those of, uh, types of those triggers, but we can like see different categories. So uh, we have some rules. Uh, we have, uh, for, for example, fork. Uh, so if anyone forks our repo, we can do some action. This is quite interesting in my opinion. Uh, we, we can, uh, we, we have this project category. So, uh, we can trigger pipelines based on uh, actions not only in the repo but in the whole GitHub project. Uh, of course, you have the pull request, push, uh, registry package. Uh, so when you use uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub re registry for, for example, for Docker, we can also uh, base uh, uh, some triggers on that. Uh, workflow. This is. Uh, like uh, kind of the pipeline triggers in Azure uh, pipelines. So when one workflow is running or it finishes or, or it does some action, you can also trigger another workflow so you can like chain them. Yeah, so as you can see, there are many, many options and everything is, uh, is like related uh, around uh, the GitHub um, project. So, uh, I would I could even say the GitHub platform because uh, uh, nowadays you can actually you you have everything you need on GitHub. You have uh, pipelines, workflows. Uh, you have uh, of course the repo, but you have also 
uh, registry uh, artifact packages and many more uh, yeah okay mm. so now let's uh, jump into another feature uh, which is the hosted and self-hosted agents so uh, this is uh, the comparison uh, from msdn documentation hosted agents for azure pipelines uh, as you know uh, we could use them uh, for uh, there is like the difference uh, between uh, the options for uh, public projects which are which I'm, by public project, I mean you have public repo, which is open source, and you can um, you can use uh, anyone can access into it. And there is also the, the private uh, private workers for private uh, repos. So uh, in Azure pipelines, even for private uh, sorry for public project, there have been some limitations. You could use up to ten parallel jobs, uh, up to six hours uh, per job which is a lot, I think, unless you're building uh, some uh, Windows server images because it could take uh, a lot, but that's a topic for, for a different presentation. Yeah, mm, anyway, so uh, you had some limitations on Azure pipelines for public projects. For GitHub Actions, you don't have that. You can use uh, whatever uh, uh, jobs, uh, workloads you want. Uh, for uh, but for private projects so uh, if you have some small project and you uh, want to stick to the free tier uh, then in azure pipelines you had the limitation uh, 60 minutes per job and uh, 1800 of minutes uh, per month uh, in github uh, actions uh, you have like 2000 so uh, a little more but still uh, it looks uh, kind of similar of course, you have more for uh, the pro and for the team uh, license, uh, but those are not uh, the free uh, free tire. Uh, Cross-platform, yeah, because as I uh, mentioned uh, previously, uh, the agents are pretty the same. I mean, they're using the same executable, so uh, of course you can run them on Linux, Windows, Mac. Uh, there is one feature which is uh, actually one of my favorites in Azure pipelines, uh, in Azure DevOps, and it's not available on GitHub Actions. This feature is scaled agents. Uh, so uh, you you cannot specify uh, some scaled on Azure and uh, say Azure DevOps. You have here the scaled, and I want a, my agents. You, you specify the image, and Azure DevOps is managing and auto-scaling that uh, agent pool. We don't have these options for GitHub, but there are another options, and I will talk about it in a moment. Uh, actually, this, uh, this is the moment. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for Azure uh, pipelines, uh, you could, if you wanted to have your own agent, what could you do? You could, uh, of course, manually create VM, uh, install the agent from the script, it works fine. You install all the required tools on your uh, uh, VM. That works fine for small projects, for uh, small, simple use cases. It's it's uh, it's cool. Uh, however, uh, if you need more of those VMs and you want to manage them, it might become a little nightmare. So that's why this case that agent option is so cool because all you need to do is to specify uh, image which already has all the tools uh, built in. So yeah, you, you need to create your own uh, VHD uh, image. Uh, you can use, for example, tools like Packer and uh, you, you install all your uh, uh, all the tools you required in the, into that image. And once it's provisioned, uh, then you uh, create scale set on Azure, you select that image. And all you need to do is to select that scale set in Azure DevOps agent pool configuration. And from that time, every time, uh, for example, you uh, start, I don't know, five pipelines, uh, the agent uh, pool uh, see that, yeah, there are five pipelines in queue and it's scheduled uh, five agents automatically. You can set that uh, after each run, the agent can be uh, wiped out, uh, purged. So 
it, you can actually uh, have the same behavior as uh, for the Microsoft hosted agents, but on your own, uh, uh, your, own your own scale set, which you can use, for example, in private network, which uh, wasn't possible uh, with Microsoft agents. Yeah, uh, so that's, uh, but that, this is, of course, my private opinion, but uh, I think it's uh, for now uh, the most efficient way to manage uh, agents in uh, Azure pipelines. Uh, yeah, and also you could uh, do it also in Docker containers, uh, but I've put an asterisk here. Why? Because uh, at the beginning, Microsoft created some uh, Docker, uh, some Docker images uh, with the agents, uh, but they deprecated that project, so it's now archived. Uh, so for now, uh, only what they provide is some tutorial, some instruction, how to create your own image and how to, uh, using their scripts, which they provide, you can um, you can create a Docker uh, Im image with the agent and use it as a runner. Uh, but uh, that option lacks uh, all the cool features with the auto scaling, which provides a scale set. So you need to either do it yourself, uh, create some uh, script or whatever else to to manage them uh yeah uh okay but uh now let's see uh, how it looks in github actions yeah of course you can do it manually but why uh yeah you have um there is also one cool option which is actions runner controller for kubernetes and using that uh, controller uh, you can uh, create a uh, ag uh, agent in kubernetes uh, there are also behave like they're uh, auto there's auto scaling of course you need to do some configuration uh, uh, but but still you you can achieve uh, i would say in easy way maybe maybe not such easy as this case at agent but similar uh, you, you can achieve similar uh, workflow uh, with auto scaling uh, agent uh, actually runners pool because we, we call them runners on github uh, yeah, and there is also one more option, uh, Terraform module, uh, but this is uh, only available for AWS right now. So unfortunately, at least unfortunately for people who are working with another clouds for uh, with Azure, for example, you can use it, but maybe it will change. Yeah, so for now we can say that AWS has the higher ground uh, here, but yeah, let's hope it will uh, change. Uh, in the future. Okay, uh, variables and secrets. So um, in Azure, you have uh, pipeline variables, which you can specify on the pipeline level, uh, which is actually not uh, the best option. Uh, vari you have variable templates, uh, where you can specify uh, set of uh, variables uh, in YAML file. Uh, you have variable groups, uh, which on the other hand, you can uh, create uh, inside Azure DevOps, uh, but uh, you can also uh, use, this is a place where, where you can store your secrets. Uh, this variable group can be also uh, combined with Azure Key Vault. Uh, so you can, yeah, there are many ways to use Azure Key Vault and Azure Pipelines, but one of them is to just, uh, Mount, and, mount the key vault into variable group. Uh, you have also secret files when you have some certificates and other uh, secrets which would be hard to keep in a text file, for example. Uh, and of course, you have a set of built variables which uh, are available for any, for any pipeline for each run. Uh, you can get the current uh, execution uh, folder, uh, some metadata about the agent and many other stuff. Okay, but in the GitHub Actions, yeah, you have workflow uh, and variables. Uh, so, uh, workflow, yeah, so you can specify variables uh, per the whole workflow, but also you can specify variables per, per environment. You have the secrets and environment sec sec secret, which you can uh, also specify per environment. You also have built-in variables. 
but what's interesting here is the context because um, the built, not, I would say context is a mix of built and, and runtime variables, uh, which are like divided per context. So for example, if you want to know uh, from which uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, from, from from which Git branch you are running your pipeline, you, you, you want to use the branch, for example, as a variable, uh, you can get it from the Git, uh, Git context, for example. Uh, you can also get some metadata about the agent from the uh, from the runner context. And so, so it's actually like the built-in variables, but it's more categorized, I would say. Yeah, but uh, in the end, the options are pretty similar. Uh, yeah, the only thing uh, I'm, I'm missing here is the uh, variable templates, uh, but maybe they will be available uh, someday. Okay, about the environments. Uh, environment in Azure Pipelines, it was like, uh, I would say, a virtual uh, representation of your actual physical environment, which could be a uh, virtual machine, which could be uh, your Kubernetes namespace, which could be actually anything. But uh, what was uh, the, the most useful feature of using environment and deployment jobs? Uh, that you could uh, use, yeah, uh, you have the history of the of all the builds which were uh, related to environments in one place. That was a nice feature. But in my opinion, the most uh, useful feature was that you could use all those approvals, logs, branch controls, and the other stuff. So as you can see, you could, um, for example, uh, you have automated pipeline, but for production release, you want uh, that someone would approve this before it goes into production. Or you, you can uh, use the branch control to specify that only uh, from a given branch you can deploy to a given environment. Uh, business hours also very useful. Uh, if you have some scheduled pipeline, which should run only after uh, the business hours uh, for a given customer, uh, so that, that could avoid situation like someone is working and now the pipelines triggers and breaks someone's work. And so many other things that you can see, you could also invoke some REST API, Azure function, uh, required template, also a very interesting feature. Uh, yeah, and uh, how does it look in GitHub Actions? So this for now, uh, you don't have uh, such many options. You have, you have the most basic one. So you can, of course, uh, use the uh, approval, uh, by uh, s selecting the required reviewers. Uh, you have uh, also say, uh, select the branches, uh, but that's basically uh, all, at least for now. And uh, I think uh, it might be extended uh, in the future. Yeah, but, but, but for now, uh, you, have more, you have more options in Azure pipelines, but of course it's, uh, mm, how, how to, yeah, it, it depends what on what uh, actually you need. So maybe this GitHub uh, stuff will be uh, just enough uh, for your uh, for your use case. Okay, so to make a little uh, summarize, uh, similar features on both uh, uh, CI/CD platforms are for now expressions, caching, artifacts container jobs and service containers. But what is missing? Uh, service connections. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention it previously, but uh, in Azure pipelines, you could specify service connections for different sources. For It might be some repo, some container registry, some Azure subscription. You don't have that on GitHub Actions, but I think that's not because that's like, uh, missing feature, but we just do it uh, in different way. Uh, because on GitHub Actions, uh, the way you, for example, use some image registry is that you specify a task which uh, logs, uh, which authorizes you uh, at the beginning of the workflow. And then you have some task which revokes that authorization at, at the end. And this task use uh, just uh, some token, a personal access token or this kind of stuff. 
Uh, but still, I think service connections were a nice feature because you could specify in your pipeline uh, all the tasks you want. You wanted you didn't need to uh, focus on the authorization part. Uh, the pipeline was, uh, I would say, uh, clean because it only contained uh, the stuff you actually wanted to do, and the authorization was like uh, it was like a meta task in the background. Yeah, but. It just, I would say it's just another uh, another approach which GitHub Actions uh, has. Yeah, deployment strategies, uh, which uh, I've mentioned that currently have only this matrix. Uh, the, one of the features also which is missing uh, in GitHub Actions uh, is that uh, when you use an environment in Azure pipelines, you could uh, add, uh, attach a virtual machine to an environment. And this was useful in uh, some specific uh, scenarios. For example, uh, you had uh, some environment uh, which uh, was like uh, 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 unreachable from regular agent. Uh, and you could uh, do it this way that you install uh, the agent directly on that VM and all the steps uh, all when you run the pipeline uh, on that environment with attached VM, all these steps they were being executed directly onto that VM. So it's like you didn't have an agent which uh, performs some steps and uh, sends some data to the environment, perform some actions remotely, but all those actions were being done uh, on that uh, VM which was uh, actually your agent and your environment. That, as I said, that was interesting uh, part for uh, some scenarios. For example, when you had uh, some uh, VM which was uh, without internet access, I mean, without uh, um, invalid internet access, but for example, you could specify that you can, on the out outbound rules that you can access Azure DevOps and that VM could connect to Azure DevOps and you still could uh, use uh, Azure pipelines to perform some tasks on that uh, virtual machine. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, nowadays when we move everything into Kubernetes, mostly and another cloud uh, uh, pass resources, then uh, maybe just this feature is no longer needed. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but uh, we I I, I uh, didn't find. Uh, uh, the, this option in uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, yeah, setting variables other than, other than secrets from the UI, uh, that was uh, also possible in Azure pipelines, but uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I won't be missing this feature because uh, the preferred way, uh, in my opinion, is to set uh, everything which you can, of course, which is not secret in YAML, so you can use kind of naming convention, convention and templating. Uh, so you have like similar sets of variables per each environment. And for example, you can only, uh, you can control the whole pipeline, the whole workflow uh, with just setting up the, for example, the environment name. Uh, yeah, but this is, as I said, my personal preference. So I won't be missing this feature, but still, um, yeah, for some basic scenarios, it, Maybe it was useful. Uh, and yeah, variable templates. And that's what I will be missing because uh, it's also related to uh, to the same, uh, that you, you can specify variables in YAML files. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, for now it's not, uh, I mean, you can specify variables in YAML files, but in the workflow file, you can't like have a dedicated uh, YAML file with only variables. So uh, let's hope this feature will be added. Uh, okay, and now I think, uh, I hope the most interesting part, migration options. So uh, yeah, how you can uh, migrate from Azure pipelines to GitHub Actions. Of course, as I mentioned before, uh, you don't need to. Azure DevOps is still a valid option. But if you want, for example, uh, what you have, uh, what you can do, yeah, you can do it manual. 
but now you will say yeah you you went to a presentation about migration from uh, Azure Platform Digital Actions and uh, the guy is talking like 40 minutes so so now and uh, so far and uh, now he says that you can do it manually so that's probably not the one you the thing you wanted to hear and that's right because you have another options uh, there is this uh, kind of tool I would say uh, this is some hobby project of uh, some community user he created that uh, mm, this application this is a very basic app i will present you that in the, in the demo uh, in a moment and this application actually allows you to paste uh, copy uh, to paste your current azure DevOps pipeline and uh, it will create an output for github actions uh, but also there is uh, I would say a better solution, probably. Uh, GitHub Actions Importer. Uh, this is official uh, GitHub CLI extension, which allows you to uh, to migrate uh, not a single pipeline, but your whole workflow. Uh, I mean, you, sorry, your whole workspace and Azure DevOps uh, from Azure DevOps into GitHub Actions. Uh, but I will show you. Uh, more into demo, but yeah, as I mentioned, this is extension for GitHub CLI. Uh, it supports not only Azure DevOps, but uh, if you, for example, use some other uh, uh, CI/CD uh, platform, uh, you can also use this tool to migrate it. However, I haven't been testing it with the other uh, platforms, so uh, I can't say you how how if it works, how good it works. Still. I can say it works for Azure pipelines. Yeah, and uh, by the time I was making the presentation, uh, I mean, the, the first time I was presenting that uh, stuff, it was like three months ago. Uh, this tool was a um, closed uh, uh, preview. Uh, of course, I have uh, signed myself to that closed preview, but for some reason, I don't know, GitHub doesn't like me because I didn't get the invite. Uh, I, I remember, uh, the GitHub Copilot, when it was released, like, I don't know, it was a few years, few years ago, I also signed into that uh, preview. And maybe a year later, I received an invitation. I was so happy. Yeah, I have Copilot. But when I told my friends about that, they said, yeah, but we had it from like uh, half a year. So it seems uh, my uh, GitHub account is not on the prior priority. Uh, is that priority prioritized uh, for for, uh, for GitHub? But the good news is uh, that uh, this tool is generally available now, starting from March. Uh, actually, I discovered that yesterday when I was like refreshing this presentation. Uh, so I will include it in my demo because I think it's a very interesting part. Uh, but uh, just for, you know that I have been using it like for one day, so I don't know. Uh, I, I didn't uh, like uh, uh, checked all the possible options, uh, so something might not work. But uh, I will show you the part which I tested and uh, which is uh, pretty exciting. At least uh, I think so. Okay, yeah, and of course there is yet another option how you can migrate your pipeline. Uh, you. For sure, you know this st stuff because yeah, three months ago it was like a new thing. Nowadays, uh, the AT word is getting crazy about it, uh, the chat, uh, chat GPT. And yeah, uh, I've done some uh, simple demo. I, I just want to just check if it can generate a pipeline and if it can convert it. So. I asked uh, this chatbot to create Azure Pipeline YAML to build button application in Docker container. So, yeah, and it's uh, th this was the output. I would say not bad. Uh, and then I asked uh, uh, create that in GitHub Actions. So by that, I mean the same context, the same thing in GitHub Actions and the output is as you can see, so it's uh, for for this very I would say very basic uh, pipeline. Uh, it 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 worked. I think uh, the GitHub version is missing uh, 
the Docker uh, image, uh, the Docker registry login, but uh, probably that's because I didn't know I wanted to push it into private repo, but still, yeah. Uh, and what's also interesting here, uh, yeah, you have here a uh, Docker command, and here you have uh, like uh, some script. So it's not only perform the conversion uh, from the task to the, uh, to the GitHub action uh, task, but it just uh, like we created it using uh, another, um, I would say another uh, feature because it's, it's not Docker task, it's just simple console. So yeah, but I think for now, that's only just an interesting option uh, for sure. It, uh, yeah, I don't think I can say for sure when, when it comes to chat GPT because uh, this crazy AI stuff is uh, getting more and more advanced uh, every day. But yeah, I, I wouldn't at least I wouldn't recommend you to uh, try uh, uh, to convert your whole uh, uh, workplace, uh, your, your whole pipelines uh, using this tool. Uh, yeah, mm, th that's just just for for playing. Uh, yeah, okay. And now the demo part. So I will show you the migration options. Uh, most I, I think I will just focus mostly on the migration options. Yeah, first uh, here is some basic uh, GitHub Actions uh, workflow. So as you can see, it's just auto, some auto generated stuff. Uh, as some hello world uh, pipeline hello world work workflow so you can see the structure is pretty similar to what we had in azure uh, devops uh, okay but first uh, the first option uh, the first migration option i mentioned is the uh, this pipelines to actions uh, application so this so this is uh, not not the official tool this is like some hobby project of some of the community users. Uh, here you can even generate the example uh, pipeline. So I have done it already. So here I, I have generated some uh, pipeline which builds also .NET application uh, using .NET Core and it publishes some artifact. So as you can see, uh, when you click the process, yeah, it's already generated, but you can, for example, use, I don't know, Node.js example, and it works pretty similar. You can just paste here your pipeline and it will uh, uh, output the GitHub Actions uh, uh, version. So yeah, it works for most of the tasks. Uh, it has some issues when you start to use the expressions because at least uh, for the time I've been uh, testing it because I can see that it's changed a little bit and maybe there are some uh, some new features, uh, but still when you, I think when you use expression, uh, even for the official tool, it might be, uh, it might be not so easy to convert it because uh, with expression, you can dynamically define anything during the runtime. So it might be, it might be confused uh, for the tool to convert it. But if you have just uh, like more, I would say, uh, classic pipeline without the expressions, I think even with that tool, you can uh, can get the, probably the working output. Of course, they might be needed some slight modifications. Uh, I've seen when you use, for example, variables, uh, you need to do some uh, modifications, but uh, still for, for some testing, uh, for some playing with that, uh, it's I think it's very very a cool solution because yeah you paste it and you have like immediately the output so that's that's really cool here uh, yeah okay uh, but now uh, I think the most interesting part so the GitHub two actions uh, GitHub actions importer so as I said uh, you uh, need to install it uh, as an extension for uh, GitHub CLI. So first of all, uh, you need to uh, get the GitHub uh, CLI. Uh, this extension it uses uh, Docker CLI under the hood. So you need to have Docker on your local machine. 
my video card desktop, I'm using Rancher desktop because it works pretty similar, but uh, it's uh, open source and uh, free for commercial usage. Uh, for Docker uh, desktop, you need license for that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you need GitHub, action, uh, GitHub CLI, you need uh, this extension to be installed. Then you run uh, GitHub uh, Actions Importer configure. And by running that configure, you specify uh, the, the path, the personal access token for GitHub, and also for uh, the source which you want to use. And as I mentioned before, this can be Azure pipelines, but uh, it also can be Jenkins, uh, GitLab, CircleCI, or any other uh, uh, CI CD platform. Uh, so, what are the possible options here? Yeah, so update version, configure, but the most interesting are those. Uh, audit option, uh, this will, uh, he here you need just and specify your uh, uh, organization and your project in Azure Pipelines, in Azure DevOps, and it will, uh, using the path, of course, you, your personal access token ne uh, needs to have all the privileges, uh, 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 it, it needs to be set correctly, but you can find in the documentation which scopes you need to uh, give to that access token. Yeah, but when you run this command, audit, uh, it will scan uh, all your pipelines. And what's interesting, not only uh, the pipelines, but also the classic releases you had, uh, if you still use it. Uh, and it will try to generate uh, GitHub actions uh, from them. Uh, so I, I will show you that in practice in a moment, but also there is another option, forecast. Uh, this sounds interesting. Uh, I couldn't test it uh, on my scenario because uh, I have some repo with some uh, examples, uh, so some example pipelines, but uh, I haven't been using, I haven't been running them actually uh, from some of the time. So I just couldn't uh, do it on my example, but you can you can try it uh, by yourself. The, the forecast, it uh, should uh, predict the utilization. So, uh, Based on based on your current uh, Azure pipeline utilization, so I think it will just count the, the time and it, uh, of of the pipe pipelines how long they run, and it can, for example, predict the cost for the runners. Uh, there is this dry run option, which works pretty similar to the audit, but uh, you can specify not the whole workspace, but just a given pipeline you want to. Uh, try to convert it, and I think the most advanced option, migrate, is where you specify uh, not only the Azure DevOps source but also the GitHub uh, uh, project, and it uh, can actually create pull request with uh, the pipeline from your Azure uh, DevOps converted already to GitHub Actions. So I think th those uh, this tool is pretty exciting. Uh, as I said, I discovered that it's public available yesterday, so I uh, didn't have a chance to test all the options. But what I did, uh, I've test, I run the audit uh, option, uh, the audit uh, command on my repo, on my project actually, because uh, it scans all the all the pipelines here. So first, I will show you very quickly this project. Uh, this is called Sandbox, and I use it for most of my presentations because it contains a lot of stuff. Uh, actually, I am using here. Mm, I have pipelines here, which use some particular features of Azure uh, pipelines. So, deployment jobs, multi-stage templates. Uh, yeah, some. Yeah, this is actually empty, but uh, uh, some YAM pipelines, also some classic pipelines. Uh, I was also doing some stuff to compare uh, the agent when we use. Uh, multiple jobs uh, and uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, the um, I thought that this might be a good example to test it because it contains a lot of different features. Uh, so we can actually see how well has it been converted. So I have run uh, this, 
I have run this uh, command, uh, uh, not the dry run, but the audit command. And as you can see, it's count my whole work uh, workspace. Uh, of course, I have got some 404, and this is fine because some of those YAML uh, sources for that pipelines are don't exist. Uh, but uh, still, the configuration remains in Azure pipelines, but so that this is uh, this is fine. This is cool. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it scanned everything and it created some output. And I will show you that output right now. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is this is the output folder. And what it created uh, here, the, yeah, the, there is some config, some uh, CSV with, uh, I think, all, all the files that has, has been scanned. But the most interesting part is here. So it's created the releases folder with the, uh, this is name of my Azure DevOps uh, project, Sandbox. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, it created pipelines and releases. So it also scanned the releases, which is uh, here. Because I probably had some, yeah, I had some old. Uh, actually, this feature is not yet legacy, but I consider it legacy because uh, uh, this is the place where you can, uh, yeah, you can specify the releases, but you only can do it using the UI. So you don't have like uh, YAML source code for that. But as you can see, this tool also scanned that part and it, it generated. Uh, also, uh, uh, the, the releases. Yeah, but example, good example. Those are the names of my uh, uh, releases here. So you, you can see, for example, here. Uh, so this release contains uh, some uh, some jobs. It actually uses. Uh, it, it uses the task group. Uh, so it's uh, like not. Uh, the tasks are not specified directly, but they're in the task group. So uh, it makes them uh, reusable. Uh, and let's see how uh, how this example, how, how looks the, uh, uh, the action. So it generated uh, the, the action. And as you can see, in some places, uh, they put a comment. For example, the artifact source resource was not converted because GitHub does not support this type of trigger. Okay, uh, that's uh, I would say this is pretty good uh, for for a tool which just tries to convert it. It says you exactly what was missing, or what will not work. So we need to handle it manually. Uh, but when you see, uh, yeah, it converted the uh, st stages actually stages or uh, yeah those were stages so it converted the stages into jobs and as you can see uh, yeah there are some comments uh, but uh, what's very cool in my opinion it also converted all the mm, variables uh, into github uh, and variables so uh, that's that's pretty cool and yeah, uh, I, I I was just thinking maybe uh, it won't uh, it will have some issues with the uh, uh, with the task group, but no, it's it just it use the task group. It's get all, all the all the task as you can see. Uh, I haven't uh, chance yet to run it, but I'm pretty sure if I uh, just uh, replace all the comments, uh, fix all the things that's missing, then it probably will run. Uh, yeah, we can also see some uh, example of the, mm, not of the releases, but from the actually YAML pipelines, which has been converted. Uh, so here, for example, uh, yeah, we can, we can see the container job. Uh, maybe first I will show you how it looks uh, how the original source looks like. Uh, sorry, here. Uh, so let's go into uh, performance and container job. 
so here I have a pipeline which is uh, very uh, basic. It just uh, it contains three three jobs which run in parallel, and uh, all those jobs they're using the same template, uh, build.net job container. Uh, we can uh, see the template in the repo. Uh, oh, or we cannot. Uh, okay, this is this interest. Yeah, I know it because this is not the project. Uh, templates. Uh, this was build.net uh, job uh, container. So it's a very basic job uh, to build some little application. Um, actually, this whole repo uh, is based on Microsoft uh, DevOps samples. Uh, so this is my fork. So if you want to play with it, you can find it on, on GitHub. Uh, yeah. So this task contains uh, some steps which just uh, restart the packages, run the unit test, build the application, and publish the artifact. So let's see uh, how the convert tool handled that. Uh, when we go here, uh, we can see the container job. We can see the GitHub folder. We can have the source. So we have like the original pipeline. However, we don't have the source of the template. Uh, but what's interesting here, uh, when you see how the job has been converted, it uh, converted it in the same way. It created uh, the reusable workflows for each of that step. So we have like actually one one to one conversion. And it also converted the workflow itself, which uh, is parameterized. Uh, it uses uh, corresponding tasks. Uh, also, uh, for the .NET uh, restore, uh, for the .NET commands, it, it just uses uh, the CLI. So it's kind of similar like the uh, like what we've already seen here. Yeah, and it's actually, it looks, it looks complete. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I think the next thing, next thing I will do uh, when I have, will have some free time, I will just try to run it and see if it works. Uh, but uh, uh, as you can see, this tool is pretty amazing. Uh, even if it doesn't convert all perfectly in ideal way, uh, so you always have like a very good, uh, uh, very good base from which you can just apply the remaining modifications manually, but you don't need to do everything manually. So this is, in my opinion, uh, it, it has a very, very, a very uh, it has uh, potential. So, yeah, so I can just uh, say that uh, if you want, you can uh, use it, you can uh, get this tool, play some with it, try to run it against your own uh, project and see what's, uh, what it will produce. Uh, yeah, so I think that would be basically all from my demo. So uh, we can jump back to the uh, presentation. Yeah, and this was a demo and now it's, I think it is time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask.